Corporation of Information. And now, from the pulpit of the Greater Allen Cathedral of New York, the Reverend Dr. Floyd H. Clayton, on your praise and inspiration station, 1190 WLIV. of frustration when we by force are facing a pandemic 
but by one decision has to now fight a pandemic. And while the world was on its knees in grief with astronomical numbers of deaths and those contracting diseases and people being laid off and businesses closing by the droves, that America has yet to atone for its original sin of racism and refuses to, in its worst state, get its knees off of our necks. All in all, I do believe that these last few months have left many in a place of sure uncertainty, a place in which many of us to this moment can't find what we can define as a point of assurance. Many have been placed at an unrest, unsure of when this will end or when life will return to normal. For some, when will we go back into church? For others, when will we return to school and job? Or when will the economy regulate itself? But in a more personal way, there are many who have been left trying to figure out when they will be able to provide for their families again or when will they be able to reopen businesses and when will they be able to put meals on the table or even pay bills on time. And I know that when we collectively find our play ourselves in this place, it is more than sure and more than clear that this is defined as a period of uncertainty. Uncertainty being a place in which no one seems to have a basis on which we can rely. Uncertainty is a place in which there are no direct or clear evidences of a sure answer that is coming. Uncertainty is a force that plays on the mind of believers because in this place it seems and feels as if we have no grip and no anchor and no point in which where we can begin to define hope. One of the most difficult places to be in is a place of uncertainty, a place in which you see no foundation on which to rest your hold amidst the devastation of this moment. And while I do believe that many may believe this place is uncommon to the believer, the fact of the matter is that there have been a whole lot of people in this season who have now seen what is a place of uncertainty. What I have found for the believer, however, is that too often we find ourselves dictated by the devastation of the world around us. It is in the moment when our faith is tried that we as believers often lose hold of our anchoring grip in the one sure thing that we can always take rest in even when there is no good in our direct sight. Because faith comes alive for us as believers where answers die. In fact, the believer can only be developed and then thrive in places where uncertainties are present. I know that we as believers often prefer to be in a space of sunshine and no rain, but the truth of the matter is that it is not faith unless uncertainties are present around us. What I have found, however, is that the struggle for believers always exists between what we see and what we believe. We often allow our moment to control our momentum and our crisis to dictate our climate. And being spiritual beings in a human experience often creates a frustration in our faith when what I want to believe is not always in incongruency with what it is that I see. Because I find myself in a moment where I want to believe that God can do it, but under these circumstances, I wonder how God is going to do it. I see devastation all around me, and I want to believe that God is the keeper that he promised to be. I see tragedy all around me, and I want to believe that God will make me triumphant. I see racism ever present, and I want to believe that by God's righteous right hand, he will uphold us. But if I could be real honest today, then I can admit that there are times in my life, and there have been times over these last few months when my flesh and my faith weren't on the same page. 
when the uncertainties of where I am right now prevented me from believing in where God can take me. It is in these moments when our flesh is fighting against our faith that I believe God calls us back to this ever-present reminder found here in Psalm 24 and 1 because these words recorded by David reveal to us a few key things about where God stands in uncertainty, where the world sits in uncertainty, and where the people of God will succeed in uncertainty. Can I say it again? The words recorded by David reveal to us several key things. It shows us where God stands in uncertainty, where the world sits in uncertainty, and where the people of God shall succeed in uncertainty. Yeah, these words, these 16 words, this one verse can defeat the spirit of doubt that is associated with uncertainty. It is these 16 words that I have rested on over these last few months that seem like they have the potential to destroy me. It's these 16 words that have the power to destroy the trick of the enemy that tries to convince us that we walk by sight and not by faith. These words remind us that though there are uncertainties that are ever present around us, that we as believers have not one worry because God is the absolute and utmost sovereign God, even in the world's uncertainty. Yeah, I have found that the preeminence and power of God is still present even in the worst of predicaments. See, God's sovereignty, church, it supersedes the rules and the governing systems of this world. Meaning God doesn't operate in the frequency of uncertainty because God is not dictated by what the world does, but rather the world is under the ruling of who God is. Meaning we don't operate under what the world would describe as lack or drought or depression, but we as believers are under the preeminence and the power of God. So while the world is shaking this morning, I've come to remind you that God is still supreme and he is sovereign. While the world is suffering, I've come to remind you that God is supreme and he is sovereign. While the world is at a stand still, I come to tell you that God is supreme and he is sovereign. Yeah, he is the sovereign God and he does what he wants to when he wants to do it. So while there are some who are walking around claiming that they are in a drought and in a depression, the declaration of my faith this morning says that the devil is still a liar. I was never in a drought because I don't depend on the economy of this world, but rather I depend on the economy of heaven. Can I tell you the difference? Y'all, Earth's economy runs on the boom and bust of business and the stocks and the gold that back it. The rather heaven's economy runs on the timing and the word of God. Can I tell you that the way the economy of heaven works is that whenever God opens up his mouth and speaks, that there shall be a shift in the earth. The entire earth responds to the voice and the movement of God. Can I tell you, I can be in a different season and still be that David's declaration does for us is that it reveals to us the ownership of God. I'm going to tell you what that means, y'all. The declaration of David speaks to God's ownership of the earth. See, he opens up the declaration by declaring that the earth is the Lord's, meaning he has complete and sole ownership over the entire earth. Can I tell you the good news about that? Right. 
person of David is that God's divine ownership means that he controls the season and the elements, which means I can look like I'm in a storm, but God knows how to send every raindrop in order to keep me from being in a drought. It may feel like I'm in a place that doesn't feel comfortable for me, but God knows how to cause the climate of the season to balance out the turmoil of the situation and cause everything to work together for my good. And I found in this that the word of God is still true, that we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. Church, all I'm going to tell you this morning is that because the earth is the Lord's, God is using every season and every element to shift us into the place that he has designed and purposed us to be. I know that we didn't like being in quarantine and isolation, but I believe that God in his divine purpose and promise gave to us strategy so that when we come back together, we're coming back better than we've ever been. I know we didn't like not being in work for a couple of months, but I believe that God in his divine wisdom is using this season and the elements to cause us to develop who we are in him so that when we all get together again, we will be able to say that it was good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn the statutes of the Lord. Y'all, David's declaration reveals to us the ownership of God. But then what I love about it is that it takes it a step further. And what it reveals to us is the dictatorship of God. Now, can I tell you that I know when we hear the word dictator, we often find ourselves in a quandary with the negative connotation of the word that has been created by other world leaders. Because in most cases, the word uh, dictator has revealed something that is negative, y'all. In many cases, in the word of Lord Acton, absolute power tends to correct absolutely. We have seen dictatorship at its worst in every state, shade, and size. We have seen it in the worst of predicaments and occasions. Right here in this country, we have seen in its worst moment, it feels like that orange man who was sitting in that White House manages to somehow keep turning our democracy into a dictatorship. We don't like the word dictator because it feels like it's taking away our free rights. But the good thing about the dictatorship of God is that it literally infers to his ability to have the final say concerning everything. Because all power in heaven and earth belongs to him. God has the final say over everything that happens in the earth that he owns. That's why I'm not moved by the prediction of the world. But I rather I operate under the preeminence of God. Because the world and its system doesn't have the final say. But this morning, right where you are, I come to declare that God himself has the final say over this. The government doesn't have the final say. But God has the final say. The doctor doesn't have the final say. But God has the final say. So we as believers have no reason to fear in uncertainty because God is the one who we depend on. Can I be honest with you, church? I don't depend on the government. I don't even depend on stimulus. 